This video will help you know when is the best time to buy and help prevent FOMO. I know, I know, you've got a lot of questions. You're wondering, what in the heck do I mean by gold and silver being perfectly seasoned? And how is that gonna help you know when to buy and prevent FOMO? And also, what does this have to do with prices and again, seasoning? Any prepper will quickly remind you that you can't eat your gold and silver. So where are you going with this, Dr. Stacker? Well, if you give me a few minutes, I'll show you how to anticipate the way gold and silver prices will move, which will help you maximize your stacking, and I'll even share some of the stacking strategies. Remember, it all comes down to seasoning, or should I say seasons. I want you to think about making a beautiful filet mignon steak. After you pull the knife through and you get that perfect cut, you can't just drop that thing on the grill and let it cook. You gotta put it in a marinade or and mix it up, or you gotta season it with something, you know, just at least salt and pepper. Seriously, you guys, we're gonna start this up again? Come on, you knew what I was talking about. Salt and pepper's here. Salt, salt, salt and pepper's here. Oh, never mind. Okay, I, just, I clearly went too far. Okay, see, you all got me out of sorts here. Where was I? Oh, the steak analogy. The next thing you have to do is to make sure you season that steak well. The whole point of seasoning is that spices and seasoning add flavors and increase the complexity of your steak, which elevates it and changes the experience. The same thing happens to metals during certain times of the year. Just as taste and flavor are two different things, price increases and rallies are very different. Flavor and a rally both are about a sensation or a situation where a combination of things come together to create a unique situation. This is exactly what has happened during the first half of this month. We are experiencing a situation where environmental factors, along with traditional seasonal performance from metals, has created an exceptionally strong rally, which actually began late 2022. Before we get into the seasonality and what we can expect going forward, let's quickly discuss those other factors that seem to be fueling this latest price increases. One, a 2022 bear trap. Late in the year, when gold went down to 1670 and then dropped below 1620 to around 1617, it almost immediately kind of shot off the bottom from there with conviction. And what it did, I think it really is it, it cleared out a lot of the, the sales stops and the shorts. And they got run off because they didn't want to get caught that way again. And prices have just responded. The second thing, people will realize that that 60-40 asset split I was just awful for 2022. So now investors and funds are looking for opportunities in a world where they just saw the S&P go down 20%, NASDAQ 30%, and bonds down 35%. And guess what? All of a sudden, they're like, oh yeah, there's like gold and silver out there. And we're likely seeing some of that money begin the early rotation stage. I'm not saying all of it, but I think we're starting to see a little rotation there. Number three, we've had this mystery buyer, <clears throat> China driving prices up higher. And then number four, higher prices make people wanna buy more, AKA FOMO, it's just the way people are wired. Now I want you to take a look at this chart of how seasonality or more simply how gold prices perform during each month of the year. I've shown this before, so it shouldn't be a surprise, but what do you see? January is the second highest performing month at 1.4% behind September, which is 2.1. And just see how the market moves in general. Now, take a look at 2022 gold chart. At first glance, it doesn't seem to quite line up with the previous slide. However, I wanna remind you that during the month of February, we had that whole Russia invading Ukraine situation, which ultimately led it into a run up in gold prices over the $2,000 per ounce mark. And that was all the way until March which was an unanticipated event. But could you, if you could kind of imagine shifting that chart one month to the left, you start to see that it definitely lines up better with that previous chart of how the prices perform with each month. Also notice that November and December are typically strong months, which then rolls us right into January and February, which is where we are right now. So with this in mind, the performance we've seen shouldn't be much of a surprise. In fact, when I checked my buying sheet, and looked at the last two years in particular, I've only made a total of six purchases during the month of January and February for the last two years in total. Why? Because I hate the feeling like I'm chasing prices. And as you've heard me say, there's always another buying opportunity. And sometimes just doing nothing is something. If you're already enjoying this video, if you're learning anything, if you're receiving any value, could you please do me a favor and hit that like button to help support me and the channel? 
because Stackers is here to help you get the most out of your stacking journey. Your likes help us reach more people. And also, I want to take a moment to shout out Mellow Stacks. And I just wanted to say, hello, Mellow, on my video. Now, if you go watch one of this video, you'll understand why I did my voice in that way. At any rate, Mellow Stacks, uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, the beautiful card you sent me in the note uh, and the sticker and uh, the Constitutional Silver. Uh, Mellow Stacks is a new channel. Uh, he's got 15 videos in deck right now. Uh, he does a really nice job, has some really cool items in his collection. Go check out Mellow Stacks. Also, shout out to my brothers over at Pimbex. I know some of you have shared that the inventory has been a little light at Pimbex, and I just need you to be a little patient with them. They are a new company, and they really took some hits with this high premium nonsense that we just experienced. And they told me they are set to restock the shelves, and they're also done, almost done with some infrastructure thing that'll make the buying experience even easier and better. So hang tight with them, keep checking them out. They really are great. With that, let's get back to the lecture at hand because perfection is being perfected. So I'm gonna let them understand from Dr. Stacter's perspective. Okay, two rap songs, one video, bad, bad idea. Okay, I just I had a little flashback to Dr. Drake. All right, never mind. I'm over it. Let's take a look at this slide. The data tells me that we should fully expect prices to appreciate through February. That doesn't mean straight up because that's not how markets typically move. Usually there are pullbacks. The question is, where will that pullback be? Is it going to be $20, $40 higher or is it going to be tomorrow? We don't know. And that kind of puts you at a fork in the road and that makes it a tough decision. Next thing, recently gold has performed in a very unique way, meaning it has gone up very significantly without a strong pullback. To me, this is the biggest wild card and creates kind of like the most indigestion, so to speak. There is a real possibility that we could not get a pullback and instead gold continues to run up until it exhausts itself at one of the next resistance lines. There's also a possibility that it could get up to one of those resistance lines and then just move sideways and not have a significant pullback. Or because it's had such a strong run up, there is a possibility that it could run up, hit resistance, hit fatigue, and then pull back even stronger. We just don't know. None of us have a crystal ball. The problem is that it's a perfect setup for you to FOMO in, which then only leaves you a couple options. I've covered this in the previous video. You continue to buy as normal. You wait, save the money, wait for a pullback, and then start to buy again. Or you continue to buy, but maybe not as significantly as you were. The reality is this, that it's easier to identify the things that you should consider than it is to identify the very personal decision how you should play this market right now. As I see it, those considerations are this. One, the state of your stack. If you have a well-established stack, it would seem to me that you could exercise some patience here to see how the market plays itself out, especially if you've been buying over the last six months in particular and were able to pick up some things in that $1,600, low $1,700 range. Two, if you're a newbie, I'm not sure you have the luxury of time. You simply need to start building your stack. And while you would have loved an opportunity to buy more in the 1800s, in the big picture of where prices are going, you simply need to focus on more on building your position. Here's a third consideration, diversity of your stack. If your stack is well established, this could be a time to maybe shift from gold over to silver or platinum as they have not had the same kind of run up. Silver has done very well, don't get me wrong. It could also be an opportunity to redirect your funds to maybe something like some mining stocks for leverage growth opportunities. Nothing crazy, something like GDX or SILs. Number four, cash flow money management. How's your cash flow and your money management? Do you have adequate savings store up? Is your debt paid off? Maybe you can focus on that for the moment while you're waiting for prices to pull back. We're entering tax season. Are you one of those that will receive a refund? Maybe you sit out and wait for a moment, collect your tax return, and use those funds to help you to buy maybe a larger piece than you would normally buy because you can save money on the premium. And then number five is really the 11th commandment. If there was an 11th commandment, it would be know thyself, meaning you know how you are and how, what will allow you to sleep well or toss a turn tonight. When in doubt, do what allows you to sleep well. In the comments section, what do you think about this seasonality price chart that I showed you? Was that helpful? How are you approaching your stacking right now? What do you think is the most important consideration for new stackers? If nothing else, give yourself an A plus for watching this video. Always stack smarter and never stop learning.